Hello everybody and welcome back. Here's our last problem in module 11. Hypothesis testing again on two population variants. Another two-tailed test. So here I'm just copying again, bringing some context back from problem 10 2D, which was a two-population t-test. And that exercise, we were comparing the salaries of TRU School of Business and Economics alumni who had economics and finance majors. In that exercise, we were just testing for indifference using 10% level of, uh, of significance. So that was difference in their average salaries. Now, of course, when we're doing those two population t-tests, we're making assumptions about the population variance. We either assume the variance is equal or we assume the variances are not equal. And that influences our calculation for the standard error. That influences our calculation for degrees of freedom. So here we are to determine if the assumption of unequal variances was appropriate. So this is telling us again how we're going to formulate our test. We assumed unequal variance. So let's go ahead and test to see if they're different or not. Now I haven't defined my terms because remember when we're doing these f-tests, one-tailed or two-tailed f-tests, we always formulate the test so that the test statistic falls in the upper portion of the f-distribution. If we were doing a t-test, it would be like being told you always have to define your terms so your test statistic is positive, so it falls in the upper part of that distribution. Well, for us here, given that our test statistic is the ratio of those two sample variances, for it to fall in the upper portion requires that the numerator be the larger of the two. And once more, this rule only applies to when we're doing these problems by hand, using the F tables. If you're using software, doesn't matter. You can formulate the test however you see fit. You can calculate your test statistic however you see fit. Okay, so with that in mind, here I'm going to define economics as number one because its standard deviation is larger than finance. So here's my economics is number one, finance is number two. So when I calculate my test statistic, I have 6340 squared over 6001 squared. This gives me a test statistic divided by 6001 squared of 1.12 and you must see the pattern you must see the routine all of these tests that we've done my goodness following that same pattern right we formulate the test we've defined our terms we've got our test statistic what's next p-value approach critical value approach so here I'm doing this test Let's see, we'll use the same level of significance, 10% level of significance. Two-tail test, alpha divided by 2 is 0.05. Which F distribution do I want? I have 53 degrees of freedom in the numerator, n minus 1. 62 degrees of freedom in the denominator, n minus 1. So, Let's go down to our F tables, 53 and 62. We can clean this up from an earlier problem. So 53, well that's going to round closest to 60. And I had 62 in the denominator, well that'll round also to 60. So then where those come together, there's my two, uh, my four critical values. Our test statistic here, remember, was 1.12. So it's 
smaller than the smallest value. So what does that mean? Well, for that f distribution, that smallest value is 1.395. That gives me an area in that upper tail of 0.1. Our test statistic, 1.2, or 1.12, is somewhere back here, which means the corresponding probability in the upper tail, well, it must be something greater than 0.1. And of course, keep in mind, this is a two-tailed test. So our p-value, our p-value is going to be greater than double that value, greater than 0.2. Our critical value, alpha divided by 2, is 0.5. Our critical value is 1.5. Three, four. That was, I think, 53 and 62, which I know isn't technically correct. I'm writing the degrees of freedom that correspond to our problem, although what we have here are just our approximate, what we've rounded to, 60 and 60. That's fine. We know that we're not accurate when we're using the F tables. So we have everything that we need, that critical value, 1.53, that's somewhere way out here. That defines that rejection space, and there's that do not reject space, which is where we find our test statistic. Our p-value is also greater than 0.2, so when we come back up to our problem, we have pretty strong evidence to support the null hypothesis. Our evidence shows that we're unable to state that there is in fact a difference, a statistically significant difference in these population variances, which means that assumption of unequal variances was actually not appropriate which is really too bad because if we assumed unequal variance, that means that we went through a lot of unnecessary calculations for that degrees of freedom. Remember that degrees of freedom calculation for a two population t-test, it's horrendous. So now that we've got this tool set, now we can actually go ahead and do the f-test first, learn something about the variance, whether we have evidence to show that they're equal or not, then we know which approach would be necessary for a two-population t-test, whether we have evidence to assume or, in that case, have a little bit greater evidence, strength of knowledge, to know whether the uh, variances are equal or not, and therefore what calculations we should use. Okay, thank you so much for watching. That's it for Module 11. I hope this was helpful. Thank you. Bye-bye.